What's up, Pickleballers? Jacob here with All Drive No Drop talking about the Thrive Azul today. This is a nice little Kevlar carbon fiber weave blend, 50-50 on that with the blue Kevlar. I think it looks pretty nice. If you stick around to the end of the video, I do have a giveaway for the Thrive Azul, so stay tuned. Um, Thrive does something pretty cool. They let you pick your own swing weight. So if you're tired of getting a paddle that's too heavy or too light and you're, or you want to buy two and that's just not consistent, this is cool because they'll let you pick your swing weight. So they send you a card with the swing weight, the twist weight, the weight on it. That's a nice touch. They also include some lead tape, so that's also a plus. $200, bring it down to 180 with code all drive, no drop. This is a thermal formed unibody constructed paddle with perimeter edge foam. So let's jump into more of those specs and get our gameplay thoughts because that's why you're here. You wanna know how this performs on the court. So let's jump into that. Okay, so let's run through these specs real quick. This is a hybrid shape. The facing is carbon and Kevlar blend. The dimensions are 16.3 inches in length and then you have the 7.5 to 7.7 .7 inches in width. You have a 16 millimeter core. The weight on mine came in at 8.1 ounces. Uh, the handle length at 5.5 inches, a grip circumference of 4.25 inches, and my swing weight was 116, and like I mentioned, you can pick from 114 to 119, and then my twist weight was 6.76, which played true to form. It was a great twist weight, uh, and of course, your twist weight's gonna change based on what you pick for your swing weight. So let's get into the gameplay for the Thrive Azul. I really enjoyed this paddle. Uh, it is a power paddle. It has power, it has pop, uh, it has spin. So it has great power and pop combo. For some that can be challenging uh, for the resets and the dinking, but let's focus on what this paddle excels at first and then we'll get into where it, it might give you issues. It is a stiff paddle, so we'll get that out of the way. If it, it does have a little bit of feedback, vibration, vibration feedback, being very stiff. It has gr great serves, great drives, great overheads with that power. I, I had no problem keeping the ball deep on my serves, no problem ripping drives, finishing overheads, ripping my rolls, forehand and backhand, great flicks, great counter punches with all of that pop. I really enjoyed it. Um, I really like the hybrid shape for drops and, and so I, I love the drops with this. It felt really smooth. Uh, I, I do enjoy a little bit more feedback with my paddles uh, when I'm hitting my drop, so I'm still working out that for the full Kevlars uh, that are a little more muted. This paddle really excels if you want to big serves, it'll let you hit those drops and then it'll let you get to the net and establish yourself with a lot of pop. The counters on this thing hit very hard. It's great to flick with, great to, to speed up off the bounce. Um, so working your way up to the net though, the resets and transition, it does pop off the paddle very fast. Uh, this is one of the paddles that for, for its pop, it's not generating the pop a lot from the swing weight. I would say it's, you know, 85% the paddle, 15% the lower swing weight. I mean, and it's not even that low. It's just lower than elongated paddles on average. With all that pop, resetting the ball, you need to soften your hands up a little bit but it's definitely definitely doable and the sweet spot is very large the twist weight played true to its nature i had no trouble blocking drives didn't feel the paddle twisting in my hand i don't think you need to add lead tape but if you wanted to add lead tape to the throat to soften the paddle up just a little bit it's you know it's not going to change the paddle uh drastically but it can help uh it can help with that vibration so you can do that to help with the resets, but I I adjusted to the paddle fine. I was able to reset the ball well. Um, I was able to dink well. I think the biggest problem that I had with the paddle is that with all that pop and all that power, sometimes you can leave those dinks a little high. It's not from a miss hit. It's more of just misjudging how much I need to put on the ball or how soft I need to make my hands when I'm taking the ball out of the air for a dink or even a roll. So like if, if I'm, hitting the dink you know cross court and i'm taking it out of the air with my backhand sometimes i'd pop it up a little bit more than i would with the other paddles but that's just something that with more time you'll adjust to spin on this great not going to give you any issues you're going to i was hitting all my drops all my serves all my my rolls and my drives this ball was dipping just fine uh, so those those are the big pros. It's a power paddle. It's a big pop paddle. If you like that and you want that and you want to pick your swing weight, then you're going to like this paddle. And you know, for the price, we'll talk more about that in the conclusion. I think it's not a terrible price. Um, it, it, 
it does feel like a premium paddle. I, d I do like it. So let's compare the Azul to the Ruby and Kinetic just to give you an idea of where this range is. So for the power, the Kinetic has a little bit more at 54, but the Azul at 53.8. So not a huge difference in power. I could notice it more on overheads. I felt like the Kinetic had a little bit more ability to put the ball away. Uh, but I mean, the Azul already hits really hard, just as hard as the Ruby. And so all three great power, I wouldn't make your decision there. Pop is where we really start to differentiate ourselves. The Azul had a little bit more pop than the Kinetic, and I felt that even apart from the testing, it played true on the court, like just getting a lot more pop on the ball. Um, and then of course, both have more pop than the Ruby by far. And then for spin, the Ruby has more spin than the Azul and the Kinetic, uh, with the Azul coming in second there out of the three, but not a huge difference. I don't think you'll notice uh, the difference between the Azul and the Ruby that much. And then, uh, you know, stay tuned for if that spin holds up throughout time. Who is the Thrive Azul for? The Azul is for someone that wants a powerful paddle and they want a lot of pop. It's not for someone that struggles with resets or pops up a lot of dinks. Uh, because this paddle is not just not going to be control oriented. It's it's not bad at control, but if you already have a hard time softening up your hands, then this is not going to this not going to help the situation. But it is going to be an offensive weapon. So if you want to grow your game into something that has a lot of pop and a lot of power, then this is going to be a good one for you. It is on the stiffer side, so if you're looking for something softer, that's not going to be for you either. If you like that stiff that's going to give you the extra pop that's going to be for you it gets great spin it has great stability and a great sweet spot so those are the factors that's going to make this paddle for you at $200 going down to 180 with the code all drive no drop I think it's it's getting into that range where you need to be excellent you need to be great because that's a lot of money for a paddle right and I think they do a great job of offering the ability to pick your swing weight because what they're doing is it's not that their manufacturing process is better than others it's just they are taking all these paddles and they are measuring the swing weight and twist weight themselves they have the graffiti and they're measuring it and they're giving you the ability to pick that swing weight so it's great you can order two of the same paddle same swing weight so that they play the exact same because a lot of people like to have two other paddles or three so i think that the value they're adding beyond the paddle with being able to pick your swing weight does make it worth the price that they're charging. Um, you know, you have say six zeros charging to the same price for the Ruby, but you don't get to pick the swing weight. So I, I think this is a good value. It's an excellent power paddle. Uh, it has everything that you're gonna want for a power paddle. Um, you know, you're not losing stability. You're not losing the sweet spot. You're just getting a lot of power and pop that you'll end up having to control, but it's way easier to control than say something like a gearbox and the gearbox doesn't even have a great sweet spot and twist weight. So keep that in mind. If you want to enter the giveaway, just follow directions on the screen and then please like the video if you enjoyed my review, drop me a comment if you have any questions and please subscribe to stay tuned for future videos. I appreciate the support and I hope to keep bringing you great reviews. Go play some pickleball.